My name is Robert W. Lee IV, and I am the great, 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 great nephew of Confederate General Robert E. Lee. With a name like Robert Lee, people were curious, people wanted to know, are you related to him? We were engaged in the conversation whether we wanted to be or not. You know, there's days I'll go to a home improvement store and hand my credit card over, and, and people will be like, oh, the South will rise again, which of course is coded language for white supremacy. So I grew up with this, and I knew also that eventually I would have to deal with it, whatever that meant. I would have to make a choice and choose whether to support the ideology of the lost cause in the South or engage in a deeper conversation about reckoning with my history. Being related to the person who has a statue that has been used not only in Richmond, but in other places as a sign of the, the uplifting of white supremacy rhetoric and action, I could not sit idly by and allow um, you know, people to use that because that's ultimately not only Robert E. Lee's name, that's my name as well. And I'm not going to go down in history as someone who supports a, a racist legacy of a name. It, it was kind of a slow burn to get to the point we are today with the Monument Avenue statue in Richmond coming down and other statues are coming down. The moment that I had to really reckon with my name and the history of it was the the, the murder uh, of the Charleston Nine uh, at Mother Emanuel. The, the killer had indeed idolized Robert E. Lee. On top of that, uh, Charlottesville, of course, in 2017, led to a moment of, of again reckoning for our country, but reckoning for me. But with George Floyd's death, with Breonna Taylor's death, with Ahmaud Arbery's death, this kind of groundswell of, of we have to change something has been a moment for us to have the conversation that needs to happen. And so for me, it's been kind of atoning for the past and talking about those things. I've written books, worked with leaders on uh, you know being a force of change instead of a force of the status quo. For those who might push back against this narrative that we need to talk about statues and remove them, I would ask them, you know, what do they value in statues? because I think our statues say a lot more about what we value than what we can learn. We can't just rest here because there's, there's plenty of statues left and there's plenty of monuments that aren't made of stone. There's a myriad of issues that don't just stop when we take down the statues. You know, Robert E. Lee uh, enslaved people. He fought for the state's rights to enslave people. I mean, we just can't get around that. But I also think that we can address it faithfully and talk about the ways to, to be redeemed. We don't have to stay on that course. And I think that's the ultimate lesson that we can learn from this history of the South is that though, we, uh, though we've made some huge mistakes in the past, that doesn't have to be our future.